All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to the final of the NIPS case competition 2023. This is the last match of a very intensive week and here we will decide who will be the winner of this uh, tremendous tournament. Babes Boyao against Bishops. The first team to present will be Babes Boyao. Give them a random applause when they enter the room. Before we get started with today's presentation, I would like to remind you all to please turn off your cell phones before we get started. Um, we also would like to advise you, please do not exit or enter uh, during while presentations are going on. Um, before we get started, we would also like to take a moment to have the judges introduce themselves and the roles they will be playing today. Hi, I'm Dale Seifert. I'm the Chief Operating Officer. I'm Katie Hillier. I'm the Chief Marketing and Digital Officer. I'm Chris Julik. I am the CFO. I am Karen Reynolds, and I am Human Resources. Hello, I'm Miley Duong, and I'm the Chief Technology Officer. Hello, I'm Eric Skogard. I'm the CEO. All right. Well, when you're ready, you begin. Let's do a mic check. Yes. Um. Working, yeah. I would like to ask you something. Please raise your hand if you have ordered food online in the past month. Executives, this is the market that you have to capture, and this is the market that our strategy will help you capture in Colombia. We are Synergy Consulting. My uh, uh, consulting mates are Christina, Jofi, and Kenda. And here you can see our roles in the team. We started by uh, focusing on the three big challenges that your company needs to solve at this moment. First of all, how to solve delivery in the future of your company, how to ensure your company has control over the delivery experience, and how to stick to the McDonald's way of thinking while preparing this strategy. First of all, we will uh, suggest you to partner with Rappi, uh, Rappi, then become a shareholder in the company, and as our last uh, pillar of the strategy, the McDonaldization and the data-driven division a decision is suggested. As a result, we will uh, achieve revenue, uh, yes, uh, that revenues from delivery will be 20% in 2022, a 20% share in Rappi, and improved online experience. Here you can see the agenda of today's presentation, starting with the analysis, then our strateg strategic recommendations will come, the implementation plan, risks and mitigations, and if you choose to work with our consulting firm in the future, we also have some further suggestions on what we can do. Well, basically when we started to, find, to, to think about what strategy would we recommend to you, our first, uh, first idea that came, came up in our mind is to identify your core competences. 
This is a really important step because with that we, we want to be ensured that you are focusing on, on, on the things, on your strengths basically, from where your profit comes. So that's why we identified all your competencies. As, as you can see, your main focus should be on the fast service, ensured experience, and secured expected food quality because these are the competencies, these are the reasons the customers choosing McDonald's. The delivery also has a, a attended value, a, a added value as well, because it also takes part in creating the experience. But the availability on the market is not as is that, that huge that is uh, can be outsourced easily, and it's uh, better to be outsourced to to, to uh, highlight and focus on the main uh, on the main competences because they are your strengths. Yeah. So we examine three alternatives. First of all, partnering with Uber Eats, then the partnership with Rappi, and creating, or, or more to say, improving your already existing own delivery system. So we took into consideration different uh, aspects. First of all, how the consumer's regional preferences. Colombian consumers want to support their, uh, their economy and their neighbors, so to say meaning that partnering with Uber Eats wouldn't be close to their hearts. The acquisition of data for potential further improvement in your company would, be, uh, would happen in either partnership, but with your own delivery system, this, uh, this potential is limited. When we looked at costs, first of all, operating costs and fixed cost of our strategy, we found that, your own, that improving your own delivery systems comes with higher costs than partnering with other, uh, with uh, third party uh, delivery, uh, delivery companies. And the potential uh, acquisition, acquiring of new customers also wouldn't happen on your own platform where only your company is present. For example, if somebody wants to order uh, from a competitor on uh, the Rappi platform, but that competitor can't uh, fulfill their order, they will go to your company only if it is present on the platform. And uh, as Kristen has mentioned, we also took into consideration the core competen competencies, which are also fulfilled in partnerships, because that's when uh, the, the idea of food and fast delivery and convenience are uh, focused on more. To support our decision, we also looked at some numbers. We created a decision matrix. Here you can see the aforementioned uh, criteria, the weights. We, as I mentioned, we mainly focused on cost, uh, the amount of data gained, because McDonaldization's one pillar is to base our decision on data, and also respecting the core competencies. And this way, Rappi came out on top, with Uber it's following it. So basically, this is really important to think about what are the main expectations when a customer decides to order food, just to think about with, just to think with their head. So look at the critical aspects. The good service, the good and fast uh, food delivery should ensure the, appro the approximative time delivery. It, the food should be well prepared, the delivery should be fast, and uh, when, when, when the, the local people decide from where to order, they are typically supporting local businesses as well. So furthermore, we analyzed and we came up with a strategy of highlighting the core competencies that should be uh, capitalized on. Uh, McDonald's strength is, uh, uh, strengths, which your company can uh, capitalize on, is data-driven decision making, which requires big data uh, and McDonaldization to standardize and to ensure the, the quality in every case, which requires control to optimize. So that's why uh, we uh, formulated that your company is in need uh, of a partner who can, who, who can give you the big data and be also flexible in order to, to make, make the uh, partnership and the, um, the long-term uh, growth work. We, here we came up with a benchmark, basically Lime and Uber. Lime is a company who focused on introducing e-scooters that could be uh, rented, and Uber uh, offered them a contract with an initial, initial investment and later on buying a share from their company uh, in order uh, to ensure that Uber this way doesn't have to focus on electric scooters, but further on the path, helping Lime uh, grow, they can acquire a share from their company and this way make, 
uh, focus on their core competencies, which, is, uh, which are um, taxing uh, services. So that's why the benchmark is relevant, because uh, your company shouldn't focus on delivering, but making sure to, to partner up uh, with somebody who has the know-how and the big data needed to make the data-driven decisions that uh, are crucial in order to make a good experience with the, with the customers. And uh, later on, to have the control over the uh, organization, the partnership, in order to really grow and to, uh, to, to, have, the, uh, to have the capabilities on, on, uh, on focusing on the customers. So that's why uh, we offer you, we um, advise you to make a, uh, making, make a frame contract with Rappi with a $1 million initial investment uh, for a one-year partnership with the uh, possibility of buying 2%, uh, 20 percent of their shares for $44.4 million. We will get on that later why it's the, the exact uh, um, uh, money. Uh, and that's basically a higher, we offer a really good price for, for Rappi. But how was, would this work and how would the, the partnership work in the long term? The first thing a customer needs when ordering is knowing the status of the delivery. We don't want to be, uh, we don't want to be live in shades. We don't want to just see like your order is on the way without knowing what to expect, how many uh, times should we, we still wait and what's the status of the order. So first, the customer wants to know when the order is accepted and the uh, food is prepared. When they see that the, uh, the food is getting prepared really quickly, they already trust McDonald's, uh, the, the franchise of McDonald's and your company, that the food will be good. And then seeing that the courier was found and the, the food is on the way and the order is finally delivered. So uh, we want to make sure with Rappi that this feature will be introduced in order to, in order to uh, ensure the quality. Then uh, we also, like uh, your company, also needs to know that the couriers uh, who, who deliver the ordered food are high quality and there is no, uh, no problem with the service offered. So uh, in the frame contract it also will contain that Rappi has to introduce a scoring system for the couriers, a five star scoring system. Uh, and uh, only couriers with over 4.5 stars will be able to deliver McDonald's orders. But in return, they get a 10% higher pay for those orders in order to make sure that the couriers prioritize McDonald's uh, and that the, the service uh, offered is good quality. But finally, uh, a feedback system is much needed in order to the customers to, to, uh, to give back the data needed. And three criteria are necessary. First, the food quality, which is on you on your responsibility. If the food quality feedback is, is good, then you already know that your part of doing business is working. And the second two are on Rappi. The delivery time, the, the exact uh, time it needed, the food needed to, uh, to get to the customer, and the delivery quality, basically how was the, the courier, the guy who, who, who delivered the, the order, how was, he, how was he, uh, his baby behavior and attitude. And on these three criteria, the, the exact, uh, with an assumption scale can be proven how the partnership is working and, and it can clearly be separated the two things, your part of the partnership and Rafi's part. Are you hungry? Well, after this day, we are all just starving. So please, join us while we are ordering our favorite McDonald's food. Well, basically, we decide that it's time to order some food, so we just go in on the Rafi's app and select the McDonald's from the list of the restaurant. After that, we saw that the whole menu is changing and starting to, to uh, visualize the menu in the McDonald's, co uh, McDonald's custom colors as well. And now we are starting to choose our items. My favorite one from your company is Mac, uh, McNuggets, so we're gonna eat that today. Well, after that, I just send my order and I'm just waiting and I know that as the lady just showed us, we only have just uh, uh, 10 minutes until the finish our presentation. So I want to be ensured that until that my food is delivered and we can all eat. So I'm just really stressed and I'm so, so happy to see that Rappi solved that problem and ensured me about the delivery situation. Because as you can see, they already ac accepted the order and they started preparing my order and looking for a career. The, the, uh, this is really important because when, when we see that the restaurant is accepting our order, we're all thinking, yeah, but until they prepare and find a career. So basically the innovation in Rappi is gonna be that they, when they are, the restaurant is starting to prepare the 
the older, they are starting looking for a career as well. So by the time the food is ready, the career is at the restaurant. So we ensure that when uh, the customer gets its food, it's going to be warm and decent uh, than back then. So after that, my order is on way. So basically, I'm really happy and I'm just preparing my money to pay for my order. And after I receive my order and eat my good McDonald's food, I'm just opening the app again and seeing that there is the availability to rate the delivery alone and also the restaurant alone. And if something went wrong, I also can choose if the problem was with delivery or with the, or with the food. And then the, the, the app is going to give me an additional cashback, uh, rapid points, basically, rapid credits that I can use uh, on my next purchase as, as an as an extra credit. But uh, all stands on the contract with Rappi, so we want to get on that what, what you would need from Rappi and what you should give to Rappi. The first one is to have uh, McDonald's specific uh, app features. Basically what we talked about, the uh, career star system, the, uh, the colors, the changing uh, atmosphere and the experience provided by the app. The second one is the three, uh, three data analysts from Rappi working on improving the quality and uh, the quality of the service uh, when, when they uh, deliver McDonald's products. The third is the career rating system uh, because that's, that's how you can make sure that uh, only uh, careers with the best, uh, best feedbacks and best scores deliver your products in order to make sure that everything goes right. The fourth one is the rights of optimization uh, to control over the deliveries of McDonald's. And the, four, uh, the fifth one is the 20% share. So basically, when buying into the contract, buying into the, uh, the company, you should, the, your, you should focus only the areas which affect your business to make sure that you have control or, or, all over them and rights to, to optimize it. And what you should give uh, is a $1 million initial investment when making a contract for a one-year partnership. Then uh, the sh buying of the shares after one year for $44.4 million. Then the Ma McDonald's branding benefits, Rappi can, can cap uh, capitalize as an emerging and, and startup business in Colombia. And the fourth one is the uh, McDonald's unique competencies, basically uh, to, to standardize and to optimize uh, the, the app and the company, Rappi's company, in the long term uh, with, with the help of a proven um, business model. We want to go to the implementation plan. We first planned with the, the planning of the contract, uh, which should be uh, started immediately. And by planning, we mean that uh, planning and outlining the contract offered to Rappi. Also planning and uh, planning ahead with other alternative contracts for other delivery, um, delivery um, companies. Uh, and uh, making sure that in the last case, we also have a contract offered for Uber, uh, Uber Eats if, if um, just in case, to make sure that there are multiple alternatives for contacting a delivery a company. Then the implementation of the contract will begin in order to outline and negotiate the terms with the uh, delivery company. And after one year, the uh, deadline is set to make sure to, to start the partnership, the one-year partnership. And then after the first year, to buy the share and, and start, uh, start capitalizing and building up from that. With the app development, we, uh, we recommend you to start developing the app before the contract is uh, ready, so that every, every alternative, every feature is already worked out in order to implement it when the contract is ready with the delivery company, and then to optimize it and further, uh, further improve in the first year, focusing on the first year, and after that, to make the uh, continuous flow of improvements on optimization. And uh, the delivering should start after the first year when the contract is ready uh, with, with the delivery company. Uh, and then uh, the first big checkpoint would be to see the, if the system, the career uh, quality system is working. And if everyone is, uh, like the, the main careers are set who are already having a good score and they deliver the McDonald's products. Uh, yes, so here you can see the revenue uh, projections uh, for your company. So with uh, blue, you can see how the revenue would look like without uh, uh, implementing our strategy. And with uh, orange, you can see the value added by uh, our company. Also, uh, taking our strategy as a project, it would uh, 
it would uh, mean an MPV of uh, 29.6 million USD. And uh, now let's look at the calculations. Uh, so there you can see that in 2000 and 2017, uh, per the percentage of uh, the deliveries uh, went uh, for 4% uh, from the revenue, and that would increase uh, until uh, 2022 to uh, 20%. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, to 20%. Um, also, the income from our strategy would mean the income from the shares of the RAPI. Uh, also, yes, the, the increased uh, uh, revenue from deliveries. Uh, here you can see the investments for the RAPI share acquisition, the financing, and the uh, legal costs. Uh, so, if taken as a strategy, the revenues would look like this until 2022 and the costs uh, you used only for the strategy uh, would be this one, uh, resulting in an MPV of uh, 29.6 uh, million USD. Uh, and because there isn't a strategy without risks, uh, here you can see our risk uh, analysis. So first, um, because of the increased order count in the restaurants, the employees would be overwhelmed. In that case, uh, uh, the mitigation would be to focus uh, on deepening and expanding the development of the kiosk system. Uh, the second risk would, uh, risk would be that uh, the atmosphere of the restaurants would be less appealing because of the couriers. And in that case, uh, uh, your company should create uh, separated uh, courier pickup areas. And the third is that the customers are unsatisfied with the delivery. So the mitigation to that is uh, compensating the customers with 25% uh, uh, coupons in case of downrating the courier, and also downrating the couriers. So we know that our strategy is complex, so every step depends on each other. So here's our solution in one sentence. Our solution focuses on, on leveraging your company's core competencies first partnering with Rappi in order to gain necessary data about the delivery market and uh, appeal to the consumer's regionalism. Then after creating a complex contract, becoming a stakeholder in Rappi for better control over the McDonald's delivery experience. If you like our strategy so far, we also have some further recommendations, projects that we can work with you on. For example, further improving the online McDonald's experience uh, with uh, group orders, the p potential special events or gamification in the app. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. My first question that I had was um, the equity position in Rappi, okay? Um, you're taking a 20% interest in, in that organization. How do, we, how do we think we are gonna, are you gonna be able to, or we are gonna be able to control that with just a 20% interest in, the, in that company? Uh, yes, uh, can we go back to the contract slide? Of course. Uh, so that's why we, we are recommending on when, when con constructing the contract to really highlight that your company is not going to, to control all the operations of Rappi it's already doing, but to really highlight and set the, the different areas which you want to control, which should be uh, those uh, which are uh, important for you, which McDonald's, the, the, your delivery is, uh, is uh, involved with. So that's why, uh, that's why uh, the, the um, borderlines and the, the, the whole area of, of the control of your company would be set, uh, and it would only focus on that, basically. Oops. Sorry if it's on. Uh, you identified that control is an important issue, um, but you also are recommending 
letting go of that control. How are you addressing, from an HR standpoint, the best customer service, the training of those employees, selecting the best employees when you are using an outside company? Yes, that's also one of the uh, the main uh, main things we focused on when constructing the co the contract. That's why the career uh, career uh, feedback system uh, is implemented, so that uh, after time careers get get a score for every delivery they get. Even uh, it's it can be like a McDonald's uh, delivery or other delivery, but they also get a, a score out of uh, star out of five, and. Uh, Careers with uh, scores below 4.5 would not be able to deliver McDonald's uh, orders, and uh, that's how uh, it would be uh, made sure that the the career service is the best pos uh, as possible. Can you talk to me a little bit? How did you value Rappi, and then? Did you consider the additional revenues that you would bring to their business model as part of that evaluation? Uh, yes, so uh, in the case it was written that uh, Rappi is valued on $185 million currently at 2017, so we estimated that the, the value of the company will grow at 10% each year. Uh, and that's how we, we, um, we basically calculated the value of 20% shares currently, which is uh, around $35 million. And we recommend you uh, offering $45 million, which is 20%, basically 20% higher than the current uh, value of the stocks, uh, in, uh, together with the 1 million uh, initial investment. I have two questions that are related. So the first one, you're proposing that we partner with Rappi for one year before purchasing a stake in the company. Would you also propose that we continue to offer our own delivery service during that time or only work with Rappi? So basically, we took uh, the consideration, the Uber Eats as well, because we know that you already have a, a, a multinational contract with them. So basically, now you are delivering with, on your own and also with Uber Eats this time. And, and it's, it's going to be a transition period while, you, while you're just transiting to, to Rappi. But, but uh, the question is great. There must be a transition period as well. So until the, the full transition, we, we also going to uh, use our own uh, efforts. Okay, so a follow-up question to that. How, are we, how would you recommend that we ensure we maintain the brand quality and the brand image during that transition period? It feels like it may be confusing to our customers. Well, oh, yeah. well, well uh, uh, I, I understand why you're asking it. It's a really great question. So basically, if, if uh, we go on your company's website, there's a list of uh, available uh, uh, deliveries. Uh, what, what we can choose, deliver companies from, we can, uh, from, what we can, from which we can choose to deliver our food. So basically our solution would be to, to just, uh, just uh, introducing other scoring, um, um, scoring system, I mean to, to promote the, the RAPI and also, also create a partnership with them through our, um, our representation as a brand. So basically to put out some um, some uh, advertisements about, you know, McDonald's now it's on Rappi and Rappi alone. Uh, and also I would uh, add with the experience. We thought that uh, online experience is something that is not possible. Like there are some options of uh, doing uh, a good customer experience online that is not available offline. So uh, partnering up with Rappi and continuing uh, the optimization with, with big data basically. Uh, and seeing, testing some different events and other options which we highlighted under further suggestions. Some new experiences could be uh, created for McDonald's that are not, uh, not available without having the data, the amount of data needed in order to analyze and test uh, precisely what is working and what, is, uh, what are the main issues. So I believe in like the implementation timeline, you mentioned that you suggest that they start the production in the app development prior to the contract being signed. So then moving forward from that, who do you foresee is like the sole person responsible for bugs, crashes, um, maintenance on the app if there's any issues that arise? 
yes. Uh, with the, the responsibility would be shared between Rappi and, uh, and your company. Uh, with the partnership, the, when starting the partnership for one year, uh, even prior to, to uh, buying the, the shares, you will have it uh, in the contract that this is a main area which I've talked about earlier, that the, the, you should focus on this, that you have control over this. So if the uh, feedbacks from customers are not good, uh, Repi should be responsible for, for making the correct fixes and optimizations, which would bring uh, even more money to them as well, because their app and their uh, services in, in general would be uh, enhanced and improved. As you analyze your risk, do you have concerns on how McDonald's will accept this strategy? And part of your, your solution is integrating into McDonald's data. Did you discuss that and share your thoughts with me? Well, basically, yes, we, we uh, re, uh, th uh, thought about as well. And we have uh, also also benchmark for that. So basically, in uh, our hometown, Cluj Napoca, there is two main delivery services, uh, Bolt Food, which is uh, kind of like Uber Eats. So it's basically Bolt is a taxi company, and also they have their separate uh, food uh, delivering uh, part. And also there is also Glovo. And uh, their, uh, the KFC solution was like, basically, they had the contract with Glovo. Lovo, but when Bold Food entered uh, entered the market, they started and uh, Bold Food is a is a national company, so a local player. So they start to, to contract with Bold Food as well, and now they are really benef It's a really beneficial contract for them because now they when I want to order some fast food, uh, maybe I think I want McDonald's or KFC, and I go to the Global app, and I'm just looking. Well, uh, there are not enough couriers, or or uh, so I can't order from Global McDonald's. So I need to, I, I, but I really want to eat fast food. So I go on the, on the Bold Food app, and I see that there is the option of KFC. So then I'm going to choose KFC. Uh, and one additional question, like the McDonald's, how would they approve the uh, acquisition of, uh, of stocks? Uh, one of the key drivers of revenue and profit for the international McDonald's uh, brand is uh, uh, basically uh, the, the capital in different companies or sub-companies or, or uh, other, uh, other services. And that's why this would be a long-term uh, investment as well, because Repi is doing good. It's uh, booming, uh, started booming as a startup, and uh, it is it's uh, projected that they will be the main player, the main uh, delivering player uh, in Colombia. So McDonald's would be able to capitalize on that as well. I have a question about the quality control and operations. When you when you start these couriers, your your training or your control of their quality has to do with the rating system. What is the, the, the guarantee that you'll have enough couriers to actually answer your calls? Is, is there going, have you done any analysis to see if Rafi has enough couriers and that will meet this criteria that you've set without any independent control or, or monitoring of those capabilities? Yes, so uh, getting the number of <laughs> we, we have a 10 minutes break now, 10 minutes so the judges can uh, write something down. So let's be back 35 sharp, otherwise you cannot enter the room anymore. 35, 535.
probably, but they're not going to tell us that. Well, last night was their night they were supposed to go out. Oh, were they?
Okay, nobody outside anymore? All right, then, exact the same procedure. Bishops, you may enter the room and give them a big applause. Bishops. This is just a reminder to please turn off your cell phones if you haven't already, and please do not enter or exit the room uh, during the presentation. Uh, before we get started, we are going to have the judges introduce themselves to the team. Hi, I'm Dale Seifert, Chief Operating Officer. I'm Katie Hillier, Chief Marketing and Digital Officer. I'm Chris Julik, I'm acting as the CFO. I'm Karen Reynolds, I'm acting as Chief Human Resources. Hi, I'm Miley Duong, I'm the Chief Technology Officer. Eric Skovgaard, CEO. Great, nice to meet you all. Newton's first law of physics states that an object in motion will remain that way unless acted upon by an equal or opposite force. Hi, I'm Mika Rohak, and I'm here today with my Arches Consulting team, Jabez, Jacob, and Sydney, to tell you that that force is here. Its name, digitalization. Today, we'll be answering the following question. How should Arches Dorados Columbia expand its digital outreach uh, in the Colombian market? Or in other words, how can we ensure that the, the direction that digitalization pushes you in is a positive one and not a negative one? What we've considered today are your partnerships, the McDonald way, and finally, the pre-existing partnerships. And the recommendation that we've come up with you today is option number three. Continue partnerships with Uber Eats in order to optimize your operations and within Colombia to best meet consumer demands. Now, Newton may not have said this, but we believe that the biggest driving forces in the fast food industry are first accuracy, speed, and margin management. And here, the biggest key takeaway is really that the customer experience needs to be whole and taken care of at every step of the way. All right, going from there and taking a look at the industry itself and some of the key opportunities and threats that we're seeing within Colombia right now. On the opportunity side, online food, food orders, they're at 30%. This is a large number rising. It's well above the trend that we're seeing everywhere else within Latin America. It is slowly working up towards that. We're also seeing last mile delivery service providers uh, having very high levels of popularity and a very large number of them existing within the region, more so than many other regions. Uh, there's also been declining unemployment, increasing middle class, and increased urbanization that all help facilitate those online sales and those digital channels. On the threat side, we see reg extreme regionalization within Colombia. So consumers are uh, tied into and really love their regional chains and regional stores and what's offered by them. There's strong local conditions that tie into that regionalism. There is a high availability of alternatives. So there's many small players, food trucks, little locations, mom and pop stores all over the place. And the informal economy is very difficult to compete with. So there's a low cost players within the delivery scene. It cannot be replicated by large chains. So the key takeaway here is without leveraging the informal eco economy, price competition is impossible within this market. Great, so now that Jabez has walked you through the threats and the opportunities within this market, let's take a deeper look at what the, op what the industry currently looks like. So the fast food industry is currently in its mature stage. And a few key stats we'd like to highlight is the fact that the regional market is worth $120 million. Furthermore, 30% of, uh, of all orders are made online. We can see on this graph here the fragmented nature of this industry and how there are many, many small players. The key takeaway here is that differentiation is really the way to win. All right, now looking a bit deeper into the competitive landscape, there are two large players, but the vast majority are informal. So they compete directly on price and use local, or mostly local mom and pop shops. Now, what's your competitive advantage within this market? Well, the McDonald's way. So you have high levels of consistency and efficiency across all your stores that cannot be replicated by any of the local players. And your technology is unprecedented within the market. Those tablets at your locations that people can tap in, that's an experience that cannot be replicated as of yet. Now, the key takeaway here is that Columbia does favor local brands, but you differentiate yourself from them already. So I'm going to walk you through some strengths and weaknesses of your company. So starting off with some strengths, 6% market share in Colombia. Like my colleagues have mentioned, this is an, a huge number in terms of the amount of uh, fragmentation within the market, as well as the evaluation of delivery process through KPIs. This can be expanded on in the future. 
Um, some areas of improvement will be the high turnover rate, 60 to 70 percent. Of course, those come along with high training costs, as well as high employee absenteeism. This is something we will want to mitigate in the future. So our key takeaway here is employee retention and standards needed improvement. So looking at some resources and capabilities, the main resources that are included would be your high levels of cash on hand and the large amount of employees you have. Some capabilities would be the very sophisticated storage system and inventory management ability. So the priorities which your management has outlined to us would be employee satisfaction, so lower turnover, higher retention, as well as the consistency of service across McDonald's within Columbia. And some high value uh, opportunities would be the experience of the future strategy, as well as to maintain healthy relations with current partners. Now before we get into projections of net income, we want to lay out the groundwork, what the finances look like from your uh, company's perspective. So we're looking at a debt to equity ratio of about 1.2, meaning that you have a lot more debt than uh, equity at the moment. Your liquidity ratio is only 0.36, meaning that your cash on hand and your uh, speed to liquidity is quite low at the moment. You have the highest margins in the industry. It's a very high margin industry, but you are allowed, you're able to compete on all levels uh, through your high margins. Volatility in foreign exchange rates will also impact your bottom line as it fluctuates uh, over time. Payroll and employee benefits expenses have increased by $24 million in the last three years, which is a good plus because we want to retain those employees. Cash from operations right now in 2017 is at about $255.2 million. So if we get into that projection of net income, right, we have a target by uh, 2022 of one point, uh, or 151 million USD. And that was calculated through a CAGR of 3% based on GDP growth over the last three years. So before we dive into a recommendation, I think it's important to take a step back and take a look at the stakeholders involved in our decision. So the first of which is Tyler. He's a delivery driver and he's looking for a consistent stream of income. He already has other jobs and he's a member of the gig economy. On the other hand, we have Carlos and Kelly. They're a middle income family and they're looking to order food frequently online. They're looking for consistent experience, something fast, something convenient, and something that they can count on every single time. They want strong after sales support and they want to make sure that their food gets there every single time and they do not want to wait for it. So keeping these two stakeholders in mind going forward is going to be important. The key takeaway here is that stability is paramount for both these stakeholder groups. So now I'm going to walk you through our three alternatives, but first coming back to our uh, strategic issue. How should Arcos Dorados Colombia expand its digital outreach into the Colombian market? So we have three main alternatives. So using the platform Rippy to use uh, order management and delivery. So this allows for a high order volume as well as it's already entered the Colombian market. However, it is unpredictable and is not aligned with the McDonald's way. Second of all, would be using McDelivery, so a digital platform to reach customers directly who already use uh, McDonald's. So there's no commissions in this area, which gives McDonald's more control. Um, however, it's been historically unprofitable within Colombia, as well as there's limited market knowledge. Um, and option three would be to use our, uh, Uber Eats, which McDonald's uh, in the US, the US is going for. So some pros to this is existing partnership, which I just mentioned, it's scalable and there's already strong existing data structure. Um, however, it is a large margin cut and gives partial loss of control. So we built a decision matrix based on these criteria in order of importance. So the main criteria we looked at were the adherence to the McDonald's way, uh, customer experience, customer adoption, profitability as well as proof of concept. And you can see that Uber Eats option three meets almost all of these criteria. So we'll be moving forward with this alternative. Great, so starting us off, I'm gonna walk you through the four steps of our recommendation, starting with change management. In this step, we're going to be accomplishing training as well as managing change. Next, we're going to be diving into marketing. And in this step, we're gonna be launching a marketing campaign to make sure that everyone in Columbia knows the amazing products you have to offer. The next step is going to be opening up the ghost kitchens. And in this step, we're going to be collecting data in order to better understand the landscape that you are operating in. And finally, we're going to be diving in to some next steps and some future recommendations that we believe that your company can thrive on, starting with processing and collecting the data that we, uh, that we got in the last step and expanding Uber Eats across the rest of the country. So diving into our first step, change management. Who is going to be affected by this? 
Well, we recommend that you continue on with your top-down approach, or I like you like to call it the cascade approach. You have over 79,000 employees, so we know that this is not an easy feat. However, we believe that if you start with upper management and trickle your way down, you can really accomplish great things. And in order to facilitate this, we're going to go ahead and hire a change management um, manager in order to oversee these changes across the organization. So what is the change management uh, going to actually consist of? The first step is going to be creating a perception of crisis. We want your employees to understand that complacency is no longer an option and going online is essential to the company's survival. And next up is going to be creating stretch targets, some short and medium term targets that your employees can easily achieve and feel a sense of um, momentum and a sense of optimism for this upcoming change. And finally, we're going to be introducing some organizational training initiatives in order to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So the, the overall why of why we are doing the change management is to ensure overall buy-in for all your 79,000 employees. Once again, this is a massive number of employees to include in a change management campaign. So we really want to make sure that every single employee knows why the change is happening, how they can help the change happen, and most importantly, what their steps are in order to ensure that they are helping the organization thrive. The last step is to make sure that every, un every employee understands this change from top to bottom. So what this is going to do uh, in order to leverage the opportunities and the, uh, the strengths that we mentioned earlier on in the analysis is it's going to leverage the availability of inexpensive labor and the existing KPIs that your organization has already laid out. It's going to mitigate the informal economy that currently McDonald's is not able to uh, leverage. So the outcome of this step is a foundation for the three next steps that we'll be walking you through right now. So next, I'm going to walk you through the marketing campaign which we've established. So looking at the marketing campaign to showcase the Colombian way um, by Colombians. And so we will be using drivers we've hired specifically in Colombia so, um, to work on the, um, the management as well. So specific cultural sauces will be used for the first thousand, or sorry, 100,000 orders so you can get a specific um, things that you want from Colombia in order to feel more authentic and like you're going to a more local restaurant. So we will be doing this through full market coverage, so a mass media campaign. There's no specific target market. We're going for Colombia in general to get more people interested in the Uber Eats app. So this will be done through um, the exclusive offer offering Sorry, on the Uber Eats app as well as Facebook to run the ads to include what we will be offering, where it will be offered, and how to order your favorites on the Uber Eats app. So Facebook will also be used to run surveys. What products you really like? What products that are new that you'd like to try? And this is to drive adoption of this app. So why do you love Uber Eats and McDonald's? We'll be running a contest for a chance to win free fries for one year. This will be done to get more people using the app, getting more awareness, et cetera. So this leverages the increasing middle class, a lot more people who want to try um, Uber Eats, who download the app on their phone, get McDonald's to their house as quickly as possible, as we mentioned in our target market. And it mitigates the uh, regional economy. So overall, we want to have a feeling of locality familiarity and exclusivity when shopping at McDonald's. All right, diving into the next area. This is where you're going to be collecting a lot of data and being able to plan out what's going forward. Starting with ghost kitchen. So what is a ghost kitchen? Before I go into any of the details about what you're going to be doing, a ghost kitchen is a store that creates food orders directly for shipping either online or through any other meal delivery program and does not have an open storefront. So these are purely for handling just orders to go directly to consumers. So what are they? These are going to be two restaurants and two dessert locations. So just tackling your two largest markets within the region. So what are they going to be doing? They're going to be used for testing different procedures and different operations within these locations. So packaging and other demands and processes to figure out the most efficient way to both package, deliver, and send out items to the Colombian market um, immediately. So what will this do? It will leverage last mile delivery service providers, populations, and high uh, product standards within those locations, as well as mitigate that regional economy, and really give you an understanding of the market through leveraging data tools, um, both through the Uber platform and through your own uh, sales and McDonald's information. So going from there into the next steps, processing and collecting that data, and then your expansion going forward. 
Now, first off, data leveraging. So it's, this is where you'll be expanding your ghost kitchens and updating your new processes and training based on the data that you've collected within these ghost kitchens and running these tests across them to figure out what works best in each of your locations so you can farther expand it and apply it to everywhere else within the country and Latin America as a whole as they reach those digital order targets going forward. Um, what you're going to be doing to leverage this data is hire some data analysts to analyze and understand the data since we believe this will be crucial in combining both the data from Uber uh, that they'll be providing on location services and overall routes and mapping as well as your sales data and product data for popularity to determine what motions will work going forward in the future. Now, for those regional offerings, this is where we're looking at creating that sense of culture in the long term. So by testing those specific sauces or any other products such as um, new cake toppings uh, fit to the Colombian market, we want to offer them three months out of the year, every month. So go after that McRib approach. Once a year, drive in large volumes, use that unique offering. Um, now, going beyond there, expanding outside of Colombia into the other Caribbean locations, so Brazil, anywhere else uh, to the North Mexico, this approach can be applied going forward. Now, what is the outcome here? You have a scalable model that can be applied across uh, Dorados and an understanding of a market that will be key in moving forward. Now, while this is a great strategy, I know you have a few questions left, right? How long is this going to take you? How much is this going to cost you? And how are you going to finance this operation? Well, let me walk you through your first question. How long? We're looking at about a four-year implementation for this process, going from step one all the way to step, step four, going from change management to marketing to ghost kitchens, and the next steps, collecting data and using that data. So if we look also at the next question, which is, what, what, what kind of results and what, what is it going to cost you? So first of all, the equipment expenses are about $100,000, right, on the Colombian market, not as expensive as on the US soil. But this will yield a, a pretty interesting tax shield. So um, next we have the service fee that we will be paying out to Uber. If we look at uh, the project sales in year one, the projected sales in year one, for uh, the three cases that we've laid out, right, the base scenario, uh, the optimistic case, which is about 115% of that base case, and finally the conservative case, we have $65,000, $75,000, and $55,000 respectively. If we look at growth rates, we have the GDP growth rates that we used earlier to project net income. So first of all, we have 3%, 3.67, and 2.71%, which is a little bit more conservative. And finally, our discount rate, right? Which, what, what, is the re, what is the return that we want from this investment? So 8%, 5%, and 10%. So what is this gonna yield? A pretty interesting uh, and positive NPV for all three scenarios. A discounted payback period that is extremely short. And finally, an internal rate of return that is above uh, the discount rate. So if we look at the financing uh, aspect of things, we have the, the equipment that we need to finance. And we want to finance this through first debt, uh, through a 10% payable loan over the, a 10-year period. And uh, after that, for the remainder, we want to have non-debt financing, which is going to be 50% uh, from McDonald's uh, Research and Development Fund and 20% from cash on hand, right? We know that you have a lot uh, according to your balance sheet. So here you can see on the right the, balance, uh, the, the financing structure, 70% non-debt financing and 30% debt financing. All right, now we recognize this recommendation is not without any risk. So we've identified three of the main risks with this recommendation, starting off with poor response to regional food. So to mitigate this, we want to do market research of the major competition and use that limited time distribution. So if it's unsuccessful within that three month period, adjust, readapt for the next period. Change what you need to and try to avoid anything that might be offensive. Limited use of Uber Eats. So this is where um, there is some risk. So if Uber Eats adoption does not reach the project projected levels, uh, we have a mitigation for this. So redesigning and relaunching that marketing campaign to really push people into using the platform. We already know McDonald's has gained a large amount of market share in the past few years, and we believe that will be enough to drive more people to using the platform. Now, last one is location cannibalization. So this is a big risk whenever you're opening up uh, new locations or opening up locations for delivery, making sure that they don't hit the same reach or take away from your sales in other locations. So to mitigate this, we recommend that you use the regionalization mapping software that McDonald's already has in place uh, for their operations to make sure you're not cannibalizing anything else, as well as use high traffic locations where there's non-franchising locations. So leveraging that Uber data that you're able to collect already from the operations as you're setting them up to help facilitate greater location mapping. 
Great, so we know we presented you with a lot of information in the past 20 minutes. So just to reiterate, the strategic issue at hand today is how should Arcos Dorados Colombia expand its digital outreach campaign in order to meet consumer demands? And we believe that our recommendation going forward with Uber Eats will have lots of positive outcomes that can be measured through the following KPIs. Starting off with number of orders per day. We will be measuring this through, obviously, the number of orders placed on Uber Eats every day. And we believe that we can uh, accomplish 10,000 orders daily across the country by the end of year one. The next KPI is accuracy, and this is going to be measured through the number of 100% correct orders. And we believe that we can reach 99% accuracy with the standardized uh, methods and processes that we've put in place in our recommendation. And finally, in terms of customer satisfaction, we believe that we can reach 100% customer satisfaction using Uber Eats' um, aftercare uh, sales process. But now let's check in with the two stakeholders I introduced you to earlier on in the presentation, Tyler and Carlos and Kelly. Tyler was looking for a consistent stream of income and he's a part of the gig economy. Our recommendation will mean that he can choose his own hours and have a steady stream of income from Uber Eats. Carlos and Kelly, on the other hand, they were looking for a convenient, fast, and consistent way to get their food. And our recommendation, whoops, our recommendation will allow them to get their food inconsistently and easily through the app. Ah, thank you. I have a question related to the ghost kitchens. You said you were going to do two of those as a as a preliminary, and and is that hundred thousand dollars that you put in the in the projection? Is that for those ghost kitchens? Is that what that's for? Or did you have an analysis as to what those ghost kitchens expected to cost for those to be? That would be the cost for the equipment within those ghost kitchens. Any software, well, not software, but hardware needed for managing the point of sale and ordering over time uh, through Uber but primarily for the cost of each of these stoves, ovens, and other equipment based on the average cost for McDonald's uh, within similar regions. Does that also, does that include the other? Does that include the other costs associated with operating those? Or are you figuring the revenues are gonna offset that? How, how are you So we have that? account, okay, oh, sorry. Uh, we, we have accounted for that within our um, cost model. So uh, if we go to the appendix, uh, when you look at each of our, um, total uh, profits and losses, those will account for that over time. Uh, any of the operating profit and revenue based on the average that we're seeing within your regular locations. So that, that has all been factored into our, our discounting. I have a question. Um, you identified that managing change is a very important part and you're gonna hire these change managers, but how does that directly impact to making this change internally in McDonald's impact this external organization doing your delivery? Uh, so the reason that we're managing change so consistently and so thoroughly is because we want to make sure that the employees that are currently with McDonald's are being supported throughout the entire change process. The delivery drivers that are with Uber are part of the gig economy and they work for Uber and not McDonald's. Uh, so making sure that the employees that are with McDonald's and that are preparing the food that are going to the deliveries is our first priority. As you analyzed Uber Eats, um, what do you perceive to be the barrier to entry for the rest of the marketplace? Why, why will they not just quickly follow you and uh, market shares will just stay at the same percentages as they all move to a new marketplace? So as a major partner of Uber Eats, you will be on the front landing page. This is part of your contract currently, so you will be seen and more visible than any of the other players in the market. This is one of the biggest advantages that you gain from working with them currently. Uh, so you should be able to eat up more market share just by having that increased visibility through your current contract. We also believe that Uber Eats is able to leverage your competitive advantage, creating that McDonald's experience that you're so famous for. Uh, so if we, can, uh, if we can translate that experience from in-store to online using the Uber Eats app, uh, we believe that no other uh, competitor will be able to recreate that. Could I get you ex to expand a little bit on that? Because you've talked a lot about the the way that Uber Eats is going to be able to maintain the McDonaldization standards, but what made you think that Rappi would not be able to do that? What was the comparison there? 
Uh, so our main concern with Rappi is the fact that it is a startup organization. They were founded in 2015, so they're still a fairly new company. Uh, and we believe that Uber Eats, being a global brand and having the proof of concept it does globally, is a better alternative. We understand that they do have high margins. However, they do have the scalability, the reliability, the proof of concept, and the built-in infrastructure and customer support that Rappi currently cannot offer. A follow-up question to that then. Um, Rappi is a Colombian local company. Did you think about the opportunity to leverage the global brand of McDonald's partnering with a Colombian startup and the advantage that that might bring? We definitely consider that advantage. However, once again, we believe that Uber Eats being a global brand and having that proof of concept was much more valuable than the fact that Rappi is a Colombian brand. Um, furthermore, we'll also be leveraging Colombian locals and our marketing campaign really focuses on the fact that this is Colombian, uh, col sorry, and this is in Colombia and it's being delivered by Col Colombian delivery drivers, uh, which we believe will have a similar effect and a similar sense of uh, familiarity and locality as uh, Rappi. Can you share any ideas or how you think that um, our brand would compete within the Uber Eats app with other local just competition? Yeah, of course. So what we think your biggest advantage is, is first of all, that partnership obviously with Uber will allow a lot of customers that do know how to use Uber to have access to your products. And we talked in our marketing campaign that you will have like those uh, 100,000 sauces, right? The, the something that's a little bit more exclusive. So it, it'll drive uh, a little bit of customer attention uh, in that way. I do have a question about that marketing campaign. So the 100,000 sauces, I have concern about introducing new products into, um, while well, simultaneously delivering, uh, introducing a new delivery channel through Uber Eats. And so how are you gonna ensure that the customer experience and the quality um, remains strong when we have new products and a new delivery channel at the same time? Sorry, to clarify, it's not 100,000 new sauce flavors, it's 100,000 um, the, the orders, sorry, is what we meant. So it'll be uh, a few specific sauces uh, based on different product um, adaptability and things that people like. Yeah, so my concern, I guess, is that McDonald's is so well known for um, standardization. It's really a strong core competency for the company. And so we're, uh, we're altering, basically, our product while we're also changing our process. And so how are you going to ensure that the quality and the customer experience remain strong through that? So yeah. with, with regards to that, this is not the first time that McDonald's has done this in a global market. This has been tested and tried across the world for gaining market share in areas that they have struggled, that you have struggled with in the past. Go to Japan, go to Korea, go to Brazil. You will see this happening time and time again within different markets. It's how you gain ma market share and become familiar. This is a tried and true strategy. So for example, we're from Canada, and in Canada you can find the McDonald's poutine, which I don't believe you can find anywhere else in the world. Can you explain your ghost uh, concept to me a little bit more? Is this uh, truly a, a test kitchen, or are you uh, changing to a new delivery channel? So it's a combination of the two. First, it's a test kitchen. So collecting data on what processes work best within this market for hitting what customers are looking for. But beyond that, if it is very successful um, and generates a large amount of sales going forward, it can be expanded as a program for just direct sales as a direct sales channel. Operationally, it's more simple to manage than a store with cashiers at the front and all, all of that other customer demand and people going in and out. Uh, the only people going in and out are delivery drivers and employees. On the, yes, the years. The first year you mentioned hiring. How does hiring work and what, how does that tie into our external delivery method? Sorry, so that's just hiring the change management uh, manager that I had mentioned in the change management portion. Uh, we really want to find someone who's high quality and someone who fits with the McDonald's brand, which is why we've allocated um, half of a year to identify that person, introduce them into the organization, and train them on what we need them to do. This, your strength weakness uh, matrix that you had there. Mm -hmm. um, you had to go over that pretty quickly, so I wanted to see that for a second because I think I had a question on it. Yeah. 
So did you did you look at what you thought you might be able to obtain in the marketplace? You know, six percent currently. Um, did you look and do analysis as to what you could forecast in terms of capturing the marketplace as, to, as a percentage of the of the market? So within five years, we anticipate to go from about six percent to closer to eight eight or nine percent. So still pretty fragmented market then. Right. Yes, but we are anticipating to get to a closer comparison to what you see in other Latin American markets, as opposed to where you're stagnating behind within Colombia. Okay, thank you. Could you clarify on that change management? What operational changes are you making for those employees who do not do delivery are you what's happening that's changing that they need this um, effort on change management so currently in the McDonald's locations you currently are doing McDelivery uh, and uh, eliminating that McDelivery is going to be a very large change for the organization furthermore we're going to want to make sure that everybody within the organization is aware of the fact that uh, Arches Dorados in Colombia is now offering their products on an um, sorry, last, end, last mile delivery system. Uh, and so if people come in with those questions, we want all the employees to be able to answer them effectively. Well, thank you. That concludes uh, our final. And of course, the result will be announced later tonight. So may I ask you to proceed to the next room, the other ballroom, where a lot of surprises and Chris will be waiting for you. <laughs> the OK. And the hors d'oeuvres are served in the outdoors place. You will see them automatically.